There has been a lot of teams throughout the history of Overwatch, fabled classics like Runaway, 2021 Shanghai Dragons, 2019 and 2020 San Francisco Shock, 2021 O2 Blast. But to appreciate something good, you must look at what is truly bad. Today, we are going to look at the worst Overwatch 1 roster ever assembled. No, it is not the Shanghai Dragons of 2018. That team was horrendous, but as we go along, you should understand why our topic of today is worse. The 2021 Valiant was a strange time. Initially, the roster who played throughout the year was not supposed to be the roster. A completely different group of people were signed. We got to see a little bit of the first roster. Valiant held a tournament before 2021 Overwatch League even began. The Valiant Winter Ball, where the Valiant actually came third in. Bronze place in their own tournament is not bad. People did have higher expectations, especially coming off of their last season, where 2020 Valiant was quite good. Dreamer was kept on the roster as main tank, putting Adam alongside him, who was a good off-tank player from Australia. Shax and Kai, with the addition of Agilities, was a solid DPS lineup. Then Lastro and Rain for support. Building upon what you had previously is going to lead to something positive, surely. Until the organization was sold to Satanists, who didn't want a part of this league anymore. Being our first organization in Overwatch League to start showing they wanted out. Players and coaches were dropped shortly before the season started. Valiant was no longer playing in North America, putting out a statement saying they will be competing in APAC stationed in China. It was very sad because all the players signed just got screwed, being locked into contracts, ready to play, then become jobless overnight. Apparently, all the players just found out they didn't have a job anymore through Twitter, so how nice is that? True professionalism. At least Kai went to Atlanta Rain and Shaxx went to London Spitfire, but everyone else was completely boned. Poor Adam mainly. It happened to the guy twice in a row, once here with the 2021 Valiant and in 2022 on Florida Mayhem. He gets signed and then booted off the team with zero playtime. Obviously, after the ownership sale, this roster needed to be sold because getting visas for all these players to compete in China was impossible. This whole situation was met with massive amounts of backlash from the community, and rightfully so. It's a really shitty thing to do. This in turn forced LGE, who were the new owners of Valiant, to sign a new group of players. We were going to see the Chinese Power Rangers battle it out in APAC. They assembled. Crystal, Milan Run, Shochung, Silver 3, Nevermore, Wuya, and Hybe, ready to eat the entire league alive. We all immediately knew nobody stood a chance against these guys. Like, how could they? Valiant now had Nevermore, who retired in 2018 and didn't play at all until he was signed here to the Valiant. A three-year break coming back to decimate. Crystal was here, who lied about having problems and stopped playing for the Puss Bush during his tenure on the Hangzhou Spark, which I believe he got fined for. And then we got High B, who was an off-tank player that was signed for main support. There's nothing else to say about that. As a viewer, we all knew Pure Destruction was coming. I remember waiting on the edge of my seat for Valiant to start their path of chaos, questioning to myself, what is going to happen to this squad? As our season opened, May Melee qualifiers were beginning now. Valiant went up against Chengdu Hunters as their first match, where they actually put up a decent fight, taking a map off of what we now know as a good team. Chengdu was kind of trolling the Valiant during the match, and as we'll get to, it's quite apparent to why people trolled them. After this one map victory, the series was lost, but this squadron led by Silver 3 would come in day after day and lose and lose and lose over and over and over again. It was mind-boggling to how awful this team actually was, essentially being entertainment thieves. And believe me, we've had teams in the past who were raw fun police. Washington Justice always got called that in 2019 and 2020 because of how horrible they were. Boston Uprising in 2020 as well. But with those teams, there was a chance of punch up. Like maybe those players could come in and do something, muster up a win against one of the other bottom teams, which they would do. It wasn't very often, but it would still happen. In 2021, Guangzhou Charge was the other really bad APAC team, like this team sucked. 
even though Krong was on it, who had a good season previously. Eileen was a fantastic player. Choi Sewan on his rookie year also did very well for himself. I'm not really sure what happened with this team. They just weren't very good. Even they were eating the Valiant alive. The skill disparity between the bottom team and the team above it was almost unheard of until the Valiant came around. They were in a tier of their own and not in a good way. I'm going to try to be positive about the Valiant for a second and say some nice things about it. Crystal and Shochung were all right, but Milanron was actually like good. As we talked about before with Viper previously, looking good on a team that's rat shit is not easy. But if you look good on this team right here, the 2021 Valiant, you need to be one of the greatest players this world has ever seen. The few fights Valiant would win was typically on the back of Milanron on Tracer or maybe Echo, being mechanically great and doing his best to win fights. Showcasing he actually had a future. The guy would keep up with the better 8-pack flex DPS players at times, and it was quite impressive seeing what he would pull off. Shochong on Zarya seemed to be playing Overwatch 2 a year early since he was basically solo tanking while Silver 3 rolled around or did other stupid things in the backline doing absolutely nothing every match. I don't think I've ever seen a main tank feed this much once ever. If someone accused Silver 3 of win trading, you might not be wrong about that. Maybe it was a protest against Valiant, I don't know. Occasionally, Shochung pulled out Sigma having a few good plays here and there. Again, this is all relative to the Valiant. No one is saying Shochung is void on Sigma. I would say he was doing pretty well for himself, especially when every match is essentially 2v6. You can't really expect much. Maybe when we reach Overwatch 5, Shochung and Milan Ron can come back and show the world who's boss in 2v2. The last player who had any semblance of life was Crystal on Hitscan, who played in Overwatch League for Hangzhou Spark before. On the Valiant, Crystal wasn't terrible individually, and even before, he was never a bad player. When he pulled out the Ash or Cassidy, there was some good moments. He wasn't putting fits on the chopping block or anything, but he was getting kills, and for the Valiant, if they could get teamfight wins on a map, that's a victory in my books. Needless to say, nothing was going right for the squadron. Every match was the exact same thing. Lose, 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 3-0 after 3-0. But that doesn't mean it was all downhill, because these guys gave us the funniest moment this league has ever seen. Now, when it comes to anything sad in Overwatch League, Philadelphia Fusion is always involved. As we said earlier, Valiant took a single map off of Chengdu and did not win another map for the rest of May Melee. And this was also true about June Joust, until one map happened. Philly was also not having a good June Joust, struggling to adapt with the new hero pools, and the fact teams only have four matches per stage to reach said knockouts, teams didn't have too much time to sort things out. Philly was one and two, not really taking maps, losing more than they should, you know, the typical Philly stuff. But for them to make June Joust knockouts, all they had to do was 3-0 the Valiant. The easiest possible opponent anyone could have. Vancouver Titans and London Spitfire, who were both winless at this point, could beat the snot out of the Valiant. So it was to our surprise when these guys actually full-held Philly on Numbani, then proceeded to cap the point and win the map. Valiant was also playing on stage in front of human beings, which makes this even more sad. This wasn't a full-on LAN because it took place in China, where only the Chinese teams were able to play each other on LAN. Anyone from Korea would be playing from their facility, so anybody having a match against a Korean team, the match would be like a 50% LAN in front of a crowd. It was a strange setup, but what other choice did they have? At least those people got to see a live event. All I can say is two things. One, I couldn't imagine how embarrassing it was to play on stage when you're a laughing stock team such as this. Two, Philly lost a single map to the Valiant, which is the only other map Valiant won throughout the entire year, bringing their total map victories up to two. Philly losing that single map to the worst team made them be eliminated from June Joust knockouts because it brought Philly perfectly in line with NYXL, who shared the same record and map differential, but Philly lost the head-to-head -head against NYXL, so they were below the cutoff for June Joust knockouts. 
So even if they won that match, it didn't matter. They were still eliminated. There was a comment saying something like, even if Philly wins, they still lose, which fits wonderfully. Fusion obviously won this series. They just lost that Nimbani in turn, making their win not matter at all. The stage was over for them. Depending on which side you were on, the Valiant did give us some entertainment. Ruining Philly's tournament in this manner is the reason people say the franchise is cursed. You can't even make this up. It really happened. Having your tournament ruined by the worst team ever is just perfect. When it comes to the Valiant, you can rip these guys apart endlessly. There's no sense in really doing that, obviously. How much can you really say they're bad or they suck? The results speak for themselves here. Winning two maps over the span of seven to eight months is horrific. So this begs the question, how is this team worse than the 0 and 40 Shanghai Dragons? Well, initially, I just looked at the map wins, taking the first 16 matches Shanghai played to try and make it fair to the Valiant since 2021 teams only played 16 matches throughout the season and see who won more maps. In 2018, throughout Shanghai's first 16 matches, they won 8 maps to Valiant's 2. So you could just go off of that and be done with it. But I feel the other reason Valiant deserves to have the worst team award is because of how much the player quality increases year by year. In 2018, the league had some players that straight up didn't deserve to be there. We had 12-man rosters of nonsense. There's so many people no one even remembers from Season 1. It was a disaster. It's sort of expected though. Everyone was still new with the whole Overwatch League thing. Bad seeds will make their way in somehow. In 2019 and 2020, we slowly started to see players who didn't belong get fizzled out. 2021 was the first year where a majority of players who were worthless essentially got removed. Obviously, you can't do that 100%. Look at 2021 Vancouver and some members of 2021 London Spitfire. But on average, the quality a viewer can expect is much higher per player with each season that passes. So having a team that can barely win a map in 2021 is pathetic. You can have a similar argument about 2022 or 2023 Vegas Eternal with how high the quality was getting. A team like that was just atrocious. Some of those players were so bad, minds cannot comprehend it. But that god-awful team is a topic for another day. It really depends on perspective to what gauges a team to be completely worthless to you. Most will take the 0 and 40 Shanghai Dragons as the worst, which makes sense, but the probability of anything like that happening is so low, I feel it falls under the anything that can go wrong will go wrong category. Fearless, Gregory, Dia, and even Undad were not horrible. They were all solid players, just no wins could be had since the rituals were completed and nothing could stop that curse. And honestly, comparing 2018 Shanghai Dragons and 2021 Valiant is like comparing a piece of shit to a piece of shit with flies on it. It doesn't really matter because they both suck. With the Valiant, I'm sure there's a lot of intangibles that went into that whole situation. Plenty of things we don't even know about nor have even been brought to the public. Hell, with the 2022 Valiant, we know some of those players weren't even getting paid. I'm sure 2021 Valiant was being paid with belly button lint and scraped up change from the garbage with the players eating cans of spam with butter melted on top inside of a crammed up room inside their team house if they even had one, which they probably didn't. This most likely killed the motivation of each and every player. Interestingly enough, some of them had decent performances throughout Contenders. Being fair to these guys, even Silver 3 was getting a few silver medals in Contenders. Shochung won Contenders China Season 2 right before joining Valiant. So these were clearly capable players. In the league, things just didn't go their way. I'm also more than positive teams wouldn't scrim the Valiant due to how bad their performances were. Why would anyone want to waste their time scrimming a team that is horrendous and can barely win a map? It's completely pointless, there would be nothing to take away from it, and you wouldn't benefit at all. It's just unfortunate this whole situation happened, and especially to the original roster who all lost their jobs overnight. Not only that, but stuff like this hurts the league and competitive scene as well. Watching a team that sucks lose on repeat is not a good viewing experience. Teams like Vesta Crew and Champion Series, for example, them getting pounded over and over and over again is just not fun to watch. Viewers want to see competitive matches, but you just can't have them when a team like 2021 Valiant exists. I would say this is the worst team ever assembled in Overwatch 1. Possibly there were some worse ones in Contenders, but with the expectations and how gated off Overwatch League was, 
seeing a team perform this badly sort of beats the rest out in my opinion. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the 2021 LA Valiant. Do you feel like this is the worst team ever assembled or is there a worse one? Make sure to leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And check out the last video I made on Overwatch's most underrated DPS line. We all should have been paying more attention to these guys. We just unfortunately didn't for whatever reason.